All right, everybody. Welcome and good afternoon, and we're glad to have you here. This is the kickoff call for NASIA's new industrial manufacturing initiative, uh, focusing on uh, advanced manufacturing office programs and resources uh, you can find at USDOE. Uh, we are working in partnership with the Advanced Manufacturing Office to bring this initiative, and we're really excited to get started on this. Um, before we get going here, just a couple of quick logistical comments here. We do have a few speakers here. Uh, David Terry, Executive Director, is going to provide some opening remarks, and then we'll have uh, go into Rodney Sobin for some additional opening uh, remarks and context for the initiative, followed by uh, Ann Hampson, who's going to provide an overview of the Advanced Manu Manufacturing Office programs and resources. Then we'll have some Q&A, and then uh, we'll talk about our next steps in terms of where we're going with this initiative. Before we get started, uh, as always, please remain on mute. Uh, if you have a question, please either use the chat box or the Q&A box to post questions. We'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar. And then also, once we're finished with this webinar, the slides and the recording will be made available to folks that have registered on the call. So with that in mind, I'd like to turn things over to David Terry, who's NASIO's Executive Director, who will provide us some opening remarks for this webinar. David? Thank you, Sam, and I appreciate everybody taking time to uh, join us today. I know uh, every state energy office is extremely busy, particularly um, uh, as we have a number of deadlines approaching for funding and a number of other things. So very pleased you can join us. I want to start by thanking uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Energy Efficiency, Carolyn Snyder, um, who's uh, along with uh, Diana Bauer of the Advanced Manufacturing Office for their support and leadership on uh, innovation and efficiency and decarbonization and competitiveness uh, uh, in the industrial sector and uh, in Carolyn's case in a variety of areas, I should add. Uh, also, a, a special thank you to our uh, presenter and partner, Ann Hampson, uh, Program Manager for Technical Partnerships at the Advanced Manufacturing Office at DOE. Um, she's not only uh, presenting today, but uh, she has really championed with uh, Rod and Sam and a number of the states uh, moving this initiative along and uh, appreciate her hard work. It's a, a great uh, a great project uh, and great activity. I also uh, should not go without saying uh, Rod and Sam, uh, Rod in particular, have worked on this for a long time. Um, also, uh, some support and assistance from uh, collaborative partners, Greg Dirkers at the Weatherization Intergovernmental Programs Office uh, that assisted in uh, some ways as well. So thank you to all of them. I, I know as uh, every state virtually on the call uh, knows the great interest in manufacturing and industrial efficiency, supply, and supply chain issues, competitiveness, um, I think uh, a number of the activities under this initiative that can be supported from economic development, addressing environmental issues, of course, um, competitiveness issues for the companies uh, involved in your private sector partners, but also, as we've learned all too well, uh, interdependencies and supply chain issues um, uh, are certainly not foreign to us anymore. And I think uh, there are many aspects of this that uh, uh, we can explore as this project moves forward. The new initiative uh, with uh, the Advanced Manufacturing Office, or AMO, as some of us refer to it, includes some key activities for existing uh, facilities and manufacturing initiatives that states and your partners have, industrial assessment centers, et cetera, but also exploring emerging technologies uh, that can accelerate uh, progress and opportunities for big and small companies. So with that, um, uh, Rod will go into much more detail as will Anne. And I'm going to turn it over to Rod now for him uh, to uh, kick us off. He is the lead in this area uh, with help uh, from Sam and others at NASIO um, and appreciate your help, Rod. Take it away. Thank you, David. Appreciate those uh, opening uh, remarks. And, and actually, it's also a fair amount of what I will say, so I may truncate uh, what I have to say. But uh, first, um, uh, thank you for everyone who's also uh, participating in this call. Um, a little bit about NASIO, I do see that some of the names are non-state energy office folks, so a few of you may be less familiar with us than others of you. So I do want to note that uh, we are the association of the 56 state and territorial energy offices and their governor designated energy directors. Uh, we serve as a resource uh, for them and we promote uh, dialogue, exchange, best practice sharing, and other sorts of activities with the state energy offices, as well as with their colleagues beyond the state energy offices in quite a few cases. And we serve to advance the interests of the state and territorial energy offices with the administration and in Congress uh, here in the DC region. Next slide, please, Sam. 
And so uh, about our uh, new initiative, uh, we are just so happy to be uh, working with DOE and the Advanced Manufacturing Office on this effort. It's, it had a little bit of a gestation, but it's a very timely effort. Uh, the, the context is that the state energy offices are showing uh, increasing interest in industry and manufacturing issues. Uh, the thrusts are certainly economic development, competitiveness, uh, jobs impacts, including in energy transition uh, locations where uh, fossil industries are important and in some cases will remain so, in other cases, uh, maybe not as much, but there are another, uh, other opportunities in manufacturing. Of course, the environmental objectives, uh, decarbonization, but also some of the more conventional air, water, and waste issues, and then energy security, resilience, and reliability. Those are, those are the uh, contexts that our members uh, work with all the time. Next, please. So this initiative is uh, supported, again, thanks to AMO, uh, to highlight and enhance energy efficiency and clean energy opportunities, programs, and resources for manufacturing industries. And this includes, as David had mentioned, uh, sort of two main thrusts. One is with existing technologies and techniques for existing industries, uh, supporting technical assistance, extension activities, the use of energy management systems, peer learning, lessons. Uh, you will hear a lot from Anne on some of the DOE programs that she supervises and works with, including the industrial assessment centers, the CHP technical assistance partnerships, the Better Plants program, among other activities. And uh, we're not limited to DOE. Uh, our interests here are facilitating awareness and uptake not only of the DOE, technical assistance offerings, but also coordination and uh, cooperation with other technical assistance uh, programs, such as the NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Uh, many states have pollution prevention and waste reduction programs. The EPA supported Energy Star Industrial Program and to seek uh, better awareness and coordination among those programs to provide technical assistance to industry. And then the second thrust is to highlight emerging technologies in industries, uh, research and development and demonstration validation opportunities, commercialization approaches, and to uh, support awareness of those to encourage uh, demonstration validation and deployment of new technologies. And here we're talking about uh, technology of uh, the uh, manufacturing sector broadly, as well as manufacturing of clean energy technologies. So we do care about, uh, as uh, we, we were chatting before, we care about airplanes and uh, wooden pallets and paper and pulp and steel as much as we do about PVs, batteries, and EVs and heat pumps and such. Um, and also, as I think every, everyone, unless you've been hiding under rock, knows, we have the uh, infrastructure law is, uh, is uh, creating large opportunities uh, for support for emerging technologies, including in the industrial sector, as well as the newly passed Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, we will be supporting uh, awareness and exchange on those, uh, those sorts of areas as well. And you'll hear some of that from Anne as well. Next slide, please. So uh, our planned activities include creation of a NASIO Industrial Manufacturing Working Group among the states. Uh, working with the working group to assess state energy office awareness, interests, and priorities related to manufacturing and industrial energy. And I should notice that uh, no note that a number of states have uh, responded to a questionnaire that we offered. Thank you to those states. And there's still opportunity for state energy offices uh, with respect to that questionnaire. We'll follow up later. Um, and then uh, we will uh, serve to enhance collaboration exchange among the state energy of offices, AMO, as well as other assistance providers within DOE and beyond DOE, as well as other stakeholders, including utilities, industry associations, and businesses to advance technical and business assistance to manufacturers. As mentioned, we will be highlighting pertinent emerging technologies in the industrial area 
And uh, that also overlaps a bit with uh, some of our activities with respect to hydrogen, carbon capture, critical minerals, as well as um, sort of, what I guess I could say mainstream manufacturing areas. And then we will be engaging with industry representatives and industry associations. So with that, I think those are my remarks. I do wanna hand it over to Anne. We're very fortunate to have her uh, as being a champion of this effort and to have her uh, present today. Anne Hampson is currently the uh, program manager at the DOE's Advanced Manufacturing Office Technical Partnerships Program, which supports the development and validation of technologies and practices to increase the productivity and competitiveness of American manufacturing and also of other large energy using facilities. The programs that she oversees, which you'll hear quite a bit more about, include the Combined Heat and Power Deployment Program, Better Plants, ISO 50001, the Industrial Assessment Centers, and the Technology Technologist in Residence Program. So I think with that, I'll hand it to Anne. Great, thank you so much, Rodney. It's really great to be here to uh, kick off this, uh, you know, initiative with NASIO and talk a little bit about the Advanced Manufacturing Office and what our our goals and, and priorities are. Uh, one thing to highlight, you'll see as we go through the presentation that there are several uh, links within here where we would love to hear responses back from from you, the, the listeners, uh, we have some uh, requests for information out that you know, we would love to have you provide information to us. And um, you'll see that there's some contact information about our various programs. And so we really want to encourage a robust two-way conversation, not just to have us be uh, you know, pushing information out, but we really are very interested in uh, getting feedback on our programs and especially thinking about ways that we can be doing further initiatives to be very valuable to the manufacturing sector uh, and, and working with states on their manufacturing base to, uh, to help it become more efficient and, and decarbonize, but also to grow and to have, um, you know, growth in, in the workforce and in the, the products that are made. So with that, I'll jump in. If you go to the next slide, uh, this really talks about kind of the, the broad vision at DOE. So uh, we are really working towards a, an overall economy-wide decarbonization. And, you know, there are some administration goals that are, uh, you know, really pushing us towards that. Uh, first, you know, having a, a you know, carbon-free power sector by 2035, and then uh, a carbon-neutral economy uh, by 2050. And so the ways that DOE really works on those types of things, you know, can fall into um, a, a few different categories here. The first is by doing basic research, you know, and trying to um, make fundamental breakthroughs. Then we take that research and then we try to, to turn that into deployable technologies through research and development uh, projects and demonstrations. And then from there, we try to catalyze deployment of those technologies into uh, you know, the overall economy. So in my case, you know, in the advanced manufacturing office, we do that into the manufacturing and industrial sector. And I am part of our, uh, you know, technical partnerships group, which is where we really do a lot of that deployment activity and offer technical assistance and, um, and other resources. So while we do all of that, we are really trying to keep our eye on uh, a couple different balls here. So thinking about things within the workforce and maintaining you know, good paying jobs, uh, especially as we transition our economy you know, into more of a clean energy economy and making more clean energy project, products. We wanna uh, you know, grow within our workforce skills. We also wanna be making sure that we do it in a way that is um, equitable and is not environmentally harmful. So really looking at how um, you know, underserved communities are impacted by those types of, of energy and manufacturing product projects and looking at how we can, um, you know, make that process better. And then one of the priority things that uh, we are really being encouraged uh, at a high level is to collaborate robustly. And I can say you all are a part of that. We are really hoping to, you know, use this working group to get information and, and collaborate with states and with other partners 
to be able to um, you know, hear back and, and get feedback on our programs and make our programs stronger. And so knowing that we all need to work together because uh, none of us can you know, tackle this uh, climate crisis alone. If you go to the next slide, it shows you know, kind of getting one level down um, from the high level mandate to the manufacturing office. So we really work to you know, increase the um, energy and material efficiency of the manufacturing sector. So those things drive productivity, economic growth, and you know, like reduced energy use. So I'm not gonna read the, the stats here on the left side of the slide, but there's um, a big reason why manufacturing is, is really important in terms of its overall energy footprint on, on the country and um, you know, its impact towards GDP. And there are a lot of reasons why we, we need to be really thoughtful and, and careful as we transition this sector uh, and, and you know, push towards a, a clean energy future. And so the way that we do that is looking at projects and, and ways we can help manufacturers in, increase their productivity and their competitiveness uh, by being more efficient, both with their energy use and the materials that they use. Um, by looking at, at the whole life cycle of energy and resources and, and helping to save as, as, you know, from a whole life cycle uh, perspective, we're really looking at, you know, encouraging uh, emerging and innovative technologies, uh, strengthening the manufacturing workforce, and then really pushing towards um, transformation in the form of, of moving towards net zero greenhouse gases. So if you go to the next slide, you can see how AMO is structured in terms of our kind of operational ability uh, to attack these different areas. So we're currently split into three different uh, you know, groups within the office. Um, we have our R&D projects group, our R&D consortia, and then our technical partnerships. Through the R&D projects and consortia, we really look at you know, having new and uh, emerging technologies and how we can look at uh, you know, new materials, new uh, processes that can really make the um, manufacturing process of, of all manufacturing types more efficient. Uh, with our technical partnerships, that's really where we take those technologies and practices and try to really provide direct technical assistance to manufacturers so that they can implement those technologies. So, that's uh, the portion that, that I work on most, and we'll be talking more about various pieces of the, the office as we go forward. So if you go to the next slide, it shows where we have some of the um, uh, manufacturing institutes. So these are parts of the, uh, what we call our, our R&D consortia group where, that I, I talked about on the previous slide. And the manufacturing institutes are located throughout the country. And actually each institute has like a, a headquarter uh, organization, but then they all have to, and as part of their award, they have to collaborate with um, many states and many other types of academic institutions, uh, NGOs, as well as research institutions and manufacturers. So they really have a significant footprint throughout the entire country. And each one of the Manufacturing Institutes focuses on, on a different either um, you know, material process or, or technology. So we have um, you know, think technologies like uh, looking at smart manufacturing. So our, our uh, SESME Institute, we have these wonderful acronyms that we like to make. Uh, IACME that focuses on composites and really gets into materials. We have our RAPID Institute that looks at, at process uh, intensification. We have our, our Remade Institute, which is uh, around kind of circular economy and, and looking at, you know, remaking and, and reusing, uh, you know, kind of having waste products from one industry uh, go into as an input into another industry. We have Simani that works on cybersecurity. And then we have Power America that looks at power electronics. And then AMO is actually launching a, a seventh institute that's gonna be focused on electrification of industrial process heating loads. So we're, we're currently in the process right now. Um, we had put out a solicitation for concept papers for that institute. And then um, you know, moving forward, there'll be a full uh, call for applications. 
If you go to the next slide, I think it dives into uh, some of our technical partnership programs and, and resources. So these programs are where we directly engage with manufacturers uh, to help them become more efficient. And so we do that in a variety of ways. And I will note that all of our programs are, are offered at no cost to the, the manufacturers and stakeholders that participate in them. So from the, the state perspective, we'd really encourage you to, to get your manufacturers in your state to sign up and to be partnered with us uh, so we can you know, be providing these resources to the broadest uh, level possible. Through our Better Plants program, that's actually a recognition program. So looking at how uh, manufacturing companies can set really aggressive uh, energy targets. We also launched uh, the Better Climate Challenge just this past year. So looking at setting greenhouse gas reduction targets. And so then we work with those companies to help them achieve their target. So we do that through offering technical assistance in the form of, of a, you know, kind of personalized uh, technical account manager that is a lab, a national lab employee that will work directly one-on-one -on -one with that company to help them, you know, you know, maybe perform energy assessments, go through and look at, at tools that they could use and really get to know and offer very customized one-on-one -on -one, uh, engagement. Then we have our industrial assessment centers. Uh, right now, there are 35 centers throughout the country. They are all located at universities, and they're really targeted at providing uh, no-cost energy assessments to small and medium manufacturers. And we have had a lot of success through this program by identifying um, you know, energy projects that those manufacturers can do. And so I, I love to say, you know, just one assessment typically uh, finds over $130,000 worth of annual energy savings for a manufacturer. And that's a really substantial number when you're looking at just small to medium sized manufacturers. And so that program uh, helps provide them, you know, resources to, to understand what types of projects and what types of things they could do to reduce their energy loads. Our 50,001 Ready uh, program is part of our, our broader energy management programs that go through the ISO 50,001 standard uh, for creating an energy management program. Those you know, manufacturers that have energy programs uh, that are, are compliant with 50,001 uh, tend to save um, you know, more than double the amount of, of energy that other, pro, you know, other um, energy programs give over their, their lifetime. So they continue uh, each year offering those savings. Uh, and so that's um, kind of a, a no cost self-paced way to, to move through and, and look at how to set up a robust uh, management program. And then finally, we have our CHP uh, deployment program. And that's really anchored by our 10 regional CHP technical assistance partnerships. And so they're located throughout the country and offer assistance when folks uh, are looking at uh, whether combined heat and power would be a good on-site generation resource for them and help them save money and save energy. So you can see over on the, the right side of the slide, there's a list of all of the tools that we offer. So we have a lot of software packages and other resources that we'd really encourage you to, to check out and uh, engage with. And we, um, I always hate it when I hear from people that they don't know about the programs and resources that we have. So I, I always want to be uh, driving people to, to look at those and, and know, um, you know what we can, can be offering them. So next slide. We wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other initiatives that we have coming up. And so these three uh, items on the, the left side of the slide. So our industrial technology validation pilot, the 50,001 ready cohorts and our better climate challenge. These are all ways that manufacturers can directly engage with us um, on looking at how they can um, you know, install emerging technologies and get a validation and work with the national lab to really test out and look at the business case for uh, installing the technologies and, and helping to de-risk some of those investments. Our 50,001 ready cohorts are a way that they can um, get some real personalized uh, uh, assistance in terms of you know, going through the 50,001 ready process 
So it's like a group training class uh, where you can have uh, an instructor that, you know, will help answer questions and, you know, you can kind of share with others and, and go through that process together. And then we have our Better Climate Challenge, which is a, um, a program where manufacturers sign up and, and set aggressive energy reduction, or I shouldn't say energy, I said uh, greenhouse gas reduction to, uh, targets, and then we work with them to achieve those targets. And one of the things we're really exploring right now through the climate challenge is developing the different pathways that manufacturers can take to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. We've really found that, you know, there's no one size fits all uh, solution. And so, you know, looking at things from, you know, having greater energy efficiency, but then also looking at, you know, how they can be maybe fuel switching to lower carbon fuels, maybe producing you know, some of their own energy on site through renewable or, or low carbon technologies, and then kind of you know, getting into to deeper uh, savings, looking at electrification and other things. And so one of the things we're really looking forward to is working with manufacturers through that process and identifying and helping to provide a customized pathway for decarbonization to each of those participants. On the right side of the slide, we have some of the other opportunities that are, are going on. We've had our, our Communities Leap uh, process where we're working directly with communities. That's a new thing for the Department of Energy. Uh, you know, typically we've worked with individual end users on you know, projects, but looking at uh, you know, energy use from a community standpoint and especially looking at disadvantaged communities uh, and helping them look at how they can transition into a, a clean energy future uh, has been a, a, new, um, a new topic area. And so if you have communities in your state that you think would be uh, helpful, there's gonna be, uh, we've started a first round, but there's gonna be another round of, of that community's project. And so we will let you know when that uh, opportunity is out. We've also been doing a workforce development roadmap. So looking at as we, you know, help industry decarbonize, we realize we need the workforce to go along with that. And so uh, we're really looking forward to working with states and, and kind of collaborating on, on workforce programs that can you know, develop the, the workforce needed for the industries of the future. And then last but not least here, we have our industrial decarbonization roadmap uh, that should be released it's set to be released um, right towards the beginning of September. So we are really looking forward to that. Uh, and it really provides a lot of information on uh, how industry can be looking at the multiple pathways towards decarbonization. And so uh, that will definitely be circulated uh, broadly once it is released. So the next couple slides, we'll, we'll talk about some of the emerging uh, initiatives that we're gonna be looking at. So if you go to the next slide, I think we have, um, yeah, one of our emerging focus areas is looking at a broader uh, view of on-site energy deployment. So we, if you remember from a couple slides ago, we have our CHP deployment program, uh, but we're really looking at expanding that to include a broad variety of on-site generation uh, resources. So everything from solar PV to battery storage or thermal storage or bioenergy. And so really looking at all of those types of, of projects so that um, we can help manufacturers look at a holistic view of, of what they can be uh, you know, putting on site and using as, as a renewable source for their energy needs. Uh, you'll see here to the right side of the slide, we have currently a request for information is out. And so we'd really encourage you to, uh, you know, once you get the copy of these slides to click on that link and uh, provide us your feedback. Uh, we're really looking to identify the types of challenges that manufacturers face when putting in on-site generation resources, uh, you know, and how, so knowing what those challenges are, it helps us be able to uh, put together resources that can help them overcome those implementation barriers and, you know, have the information and resources they need to, uh, you know, appropriately plan on, um, you know, how they can be uh, using those types of, of resources, both to save them money and, you know, to have a, a less environmental impact. So highly encourage you to engage with that. 
And if we can go to the next slide. Uh, we've also started a new initiative where we are going to be really focused on energy intensive industries. So there's a, a broad you know, spectrum within the industrial sector for these you know, energy intensive industries here with you know, food, cement and lime, iron and steel, chemicals, um, glass and, and um, you know, aluminum and paper. And so those industries you know, take up the, the vast majority of the you know, um, energy footprint and, and carbon footprint within the industrial space. So we're really looking to engage with those industries more and figure out you know, what types of technologies they need, um, what, what's really specific to them and, and how we can be, you know, what types of services we could offer them, whether it would be assessments or um, workforce development training. And so we're, we're currently um, gonna, you know, trying to look at, at uh, industries that we can work with to, to pilot and have some conversations. So if you know and, and have, uh, energy intensive industries in your state, we'd highly recommend that you uh, forward this along to them so that we can be working with them and, and helping identify the ways we can best be um, serving them. If you go to the, the next slide, um, last but not least for our, our emerging focus areas, this is um, you know focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion is a lot of, of focus. Uh, because of the Justice 40 initiative, where we're really looking at how we can deliver 40% of our overall benefits uh, to disadvantaged communities. And so some of the ways we're doing that is through our Communities LEAP program. We're also looking at how our assessment centers can um, focus in on disadvantaged communities and help provide services to manufacturers within those communities. And we're gonna be doing more at the community level and um, would really love to engage with states to identify communities uh, that we could be working with. Uh, we're also looking a lot at energy transitional communities. So maybe where there were former um, coal power plants or coal mines and that they're trying to look at how they can transition both their workforce and just the infrastructure uh, you know, for those facilities you know, into uh, manufacturing or, or other types of uses. And that's something that we're really trying to look at how we can get more engaged in that space. So next slide. Uh, also, we also wanted to cover, um, as Rodney had mentioned earlier, there is a lot going on uh, right now because of uh, recent legislation. And so in the infrastructure law, there were several provisions that were related to manufacturing. Uh, I will note these three provisions uh, on this slide are being implemented by the new Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains. And so AMO is working along, along with them uh, to collaborate on these. But that's another aspect that we're hoping to, um, through this working group, make sure that the states and, and everyone is aware of, of all of the opportunities going on DOE-wide that are happening for um, the industrial sector. So the first one is the Industrial Research and Assessment Centers. So that program you did hear about, it's an existing program um, that is gonna be moving over to this new office, but it's also gonna be substantially expanded. So right now the current program uh, has assessment centers at universities and they offer assessments to small to medium manufacturers in, in their region. Uh, this program is going to be extended to also work with community colleges, technical schools, and, and union training programs. And we're really excited about that expansion because we, we think it'll really be able to reach a lot more manufacturers while also training, uh, you know, students and, uh, you, know, a, you know, kind of preparing the future manufacturing workforce. Some other areas that are going to be expanded is, is looking uh, at an internship and apprenticeship program. They're going to be doing a lot more coordination activities. Um, they're going to be creating centers of excellence among the existing IACs. And then the, the big uh, excitement as well is around the grants program that's going to go alongside the IACs. So there's going to be $400 million worth of grants available for manufacturers to implement recommendations from IAC assessments. And so those grants are gonna be 
uh, you know, are, are intended to really help manufacturers take that next step in installing energy efficient equipment and, and you know, making big gains on being able to reduce their, um, their greenhouse gas footprint. So the next provision is the Advanced Energy Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Program. So uh, this provision, and I guess I should have said at the beginning, all three of these provisions are very specifically focused on small to medium manufacturers. So this provision, again, is, is focused on, on small to medium, uh, which are, you know, tend to be manufacturers with, uh, there's three different um, categories, or three different criteria to meet that. So it's less than 500 employees. Uh, energy bills in the range of 100,000 to 3.5 million dollars a year, and then having annual uh, revenues below 100 million dollars. So the the small to medium, there's a, a big size range uh, there, but they are also not, you know, uh, it, this is not for Dow Chemical. It's more for you know uh, the smaller. They tend to be. Um, uh, suppliers to larger manufacturers. But so this provision uh, is really looking at, uh, you know, former coal communities. So areas where there was a coal mine or a coal power plant shut down. Uh, and it's focused on two types of grants. One would be basically to encourage new manufacturing capacity. So whether that's a new plant or retooling an existing plant uh, to make a different product, uh, you know, or expanding an existing plant, uh, you know, looking at uh, you know, either recycling products or uh, manufacturing green energy or, or clean energy products. The second type of grant is for those same types of manufacturers, but to install energy savings projects and greenhouse gas saving projects. And so you can see there's a request for information out for this program as well. So we really encourage you to access that and you know, give your feedback about how we can best be designing this program to make it most impactful for the small to medium manufacturers and especially in those communities we're trying to reach. And then last but not least, we have the State Manufacturing Leadership Program. And so this is gonna be particularly relevant to you know, the state folks on the call. Um, you know, we're gonna be working with states to support smart manufacturing technologies. Uh, and then also, you know, the use of high performance computing uh, to help the optimization with data from smart manufacturing uh, technology use. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on all of those uh, provisions. If you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see, you know, there are several offices within the Department of Energy now that are going to be working in the manufacturing space. So I um, am in our advanced manufacturing office where we do uh, research and development and technical assistance. Uh, those infrastructure bill uh, off of provisions are gonna be led out of the Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains where they're doing a lot of um, uh, modernization and, and deployment of manufacturing facilities. We also have two other offices that are, are in this space as well. One is our Office of Fossil Energy and Carbon Management that really looks at um, carbon capture and uh, you know, how that uh, could be in, uh, you know, put into practice at manufacturing plants. And then our Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations that focuses on large demonstrations of, of clean energy. And so one of the areas that they're working on is also the industrial uh, manufacturing space. So we're hoping through this working group, we can bring um, the expertise and, and the you know, activities that are going on at all of these offices to this working group and make sure that you know about all of the funding opportunities uh, that DOE has in this industrial and manufacturing space. So next slide. So this is um, kind of our, our look ahead and just wanted to highlight that you know, I'm really excited about this, this working group. You know, our first priority here is to really enhance communication, uh, you know, particularly with the states, but also with, with all sorts of stakeholders who are interested in the manufacturing space. And so we really highly encourage you to be interactive with us. So we, we definitely want to do presentations like this where we're letting you know what, what we're doing, but uh, I can't stress enough that we wanna hear from you through those uh, requests for information, 
Uh, the next slide is going to have my email address on it. Um, please look at our website, please engage with us because that's where we can really develop the best and the most impactful programs. We also are really looking forward to the ability to have peer exchange and conversation and really think about how, you know, maybe best practices could be shared. You know, if one state has a really strong program that we can then, you know, come alongside as, as the federal government, we want to be able to replicate that, uh, hopefully throughout the country. And so really sharing those and using this group as, as a key way to do that. We also want to identify, um, you know, mutual areas of priority. We have a lot of areas, you know, some of which are listed here and, and that I've talked about, but we want to hear what, what are your priorities? Is there something we're missing? And if so, we really want to make sure that we're diving into that and providing um, all of the states uh, with the, the support that they need. And then ultimately, we want to provide you all with as much, uh, you know, data and technical resources and information about funding and options available to you, uh, because really we're strongest where, you know, we can all be working together and we can be serving the sector in the best way possible. So I think my last, the, if we go to the next slide, that just has a thank you. And uh, my email address is here along with Megan Kelly, who is working with me on this initiative. Please feel free to reach out. And I think at this point, we can take any questions. All right, thank you so much, Anne. Really appreciate that. It looks like we do have a few questions here in the chat box. Actually, nope, that's Rodney putting in resources, which are also available to look at. Um, one thing we do have here is, uh, is do you have any estimate of when the Workforce Development Roadmap will, initiative will be launched? So that initiative has been launched in terms of the fact that it's been started. We are, we're currently working with uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab on developing a roadmap. We've started doing some um, uh, information gathering, but we're going to be doing a lot more. And that's one of the things in, in terms of workforce development that we want to engage into the with states and with other stakeholders. So you will definitely be hearing more about information sharing workshops and uh, other activities that uh, we're going to be having because basically the roadmap is an effort for us to identify the areas uh, that we can be um, you know, working in to, to have an impactful uh, force within the manufacturing sector. One of the things we definitely do not want to do is duplicate programs or compete with existing programs. Uh, we are not trying to do that. We really want to make sure that we're being additive and providing additional value. And so, uh, so the, that activity is, is launched. We're expecting to be able to have it wrapped up I think maybe in another six, six to eight months. So it is ongoing uh, and we'll um, have, and there will be definitely be more time and we'll probably have some meetings very directly focused on workforce uh, upcoming. Great. So a question, a question for you, Anne here. Um, you know, obviously the big thing that our members are thinking about right now is the Inflation Reduction Act or the IRA, since that was just signed into law. I know this is brand new, but could you maybe say a little bit about if there are any about some of the manufacturing provisions in this uh, law? Sure, I can. And as you mentioned, since it's so new, there's a lot of activity going on just to figure out right now <laughs> internally at the department what's in it, what can we do. So there is just a huge amount uh, within this space, uh, but there's a lot that also focuses on American clean energy manufacturing. There are tax credits for uh, the manufacturing of solar panels, wind turbines, batteries, and other clean technologies. It also has grant and loans, uh, grants and loans for retooling existing manufacturing facilities to uh, manufacture uh, you know, electric vehicles or manufacturer components for them. And then there's also a, a very noteworthy investment for, for DOE that has $5.8 billion uh, for a new advanced industrial facilities deployment program. So that's actually gonna be run out of the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations. 
and it's going to focus on reducing emissions from energy intensive sectors like the chemicals, steel and cement. So we're hoping to coordinate, uh, but it, it is still so new that, uh, you know, it's at the very nascent stages and, you know, we'll be definitely putting out information as it becomes available. Good to hear it. A um, couple questions here, and I think you know these relate generally to the um, I, I, actually the IIJA instead of the IRA. Um, so there are a few various IIJA provisions, you know, such as Section 40521, which is supporting industry applying IAC recommendations, can provide funding subject obviously to a, to a match. Um, can companies use money loaned through federally supported programs to match federally granted money? So they, they can, I mean, they'd have to look at the specific, um, so each, you know, certain programs have their very specific eligibility rules, but in general, um, you know, the, typically DOE has a default match for most of its funding at 50%. And so sometimes that, that gets changed for different provisions, but, uh, you know, the program uh, or the grant money, you know, can provide uh, up to half of the funding, and then of which the other half has to come from uh, non-federal sources. Granted, if it's a loan program, or there are things like tax credits uh, that you know are federal, but yet um, you know can can help that picture. Those things can be uh, put together to enhance the financial picture of the project. Got it. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, I guess another question here would be, you know, it's good to see cross-agency coordination, but is there interagency and interjurisdiction exchange in coordination? You know, for example, NIST with state and other partners run the Manufacturing Extension Partnership. So are, are you engaging MEP or are there other programs or agencies or state programs you're engaging with? What's, what's kind of the state of the market here? Yeah, absolutely. We are working to engage with as many <laughs> uh, as many people as possible. And so that's both within our uh, agency, within DOE, that's within other government agencies, uh, as well as the private sector and NGOs and manufacturing uh, associations. So specifically, we work really closely with the, the NIST manufacturing extension partnerships. We even have you know, some of the, the MEPs, as they're, they're called, are actually co-located at universities or, or organizations where we have um, some of our industrial assessment centers. And that program, or those two programs, have worked very, very closely together in the past. We've also had um, a lot of, of, you know, work closely with agencies like EPA and their Energy Star for Industry team. So I definitely want to do a shout out for that program. Um, it is very robust, especially in working with uh, energy intensive manufacturers. And so we're gonna be working together uh, with them in the future on, on some specific activities for uh, energy intensives. And you know, we've also been working with other agencies like the Department of Commerce and, and the Department of Labor on some of their workforce strategies. And, and we are just very eager to collaborate as much as possible uh, with other agencies and, and other organizations that are, are operating in this space. Because quite honestly, you know, even though, uh, you know, we've been getting, you know, money through these, these various bills, uh, we still have to, to work together to make that money go as far as possible and really have the maximum impact that it can. So uh, we're definitely engaging with them and we want to be engaging more with uh, state programs, which is one of the reasons why uh, we're trying to do this uh, working group. Got it. And and just as a, a note here, you know, this is also an area that NASIO will be working with the states to kind of enhance cooperation as well and, and with DOE. Um, we have a couple more questions here for Anne, but in the meantime, you know, if you do have questions, please be sure to put them in the chat box or in the Q&A so we can get to them. Um, in the meantime, you know, a quick question for you here, thinking through some of the other provisions in the IIJA um, in section 40534 around state manufacturing leadership. Um, that program is going to assist states to help manufacturers 
implement smart manufacturing as well as to access national lab um, high performance computing resources. So in this case, what is meant by exactly by smart manufacturing? Yeah, smart manufacturing, it, it can sound like a, a catchphrase and, and can be a little nebulous, but what we're talking about here is basically the use of digital communications and information technology uh, to be able to increase the, the performance of a facility. So it can do that by um, increasing the qu product quality, reducing the costs or, or saving energy. And really, you know, when we talk about smart manufacturing technologies, mostly what we're talking about is, is sensors and controls that uh, where you're basically collecting additional data about the conditions that are happening throughout the manufacturing process. And then being able to use things like machine learning and um, artificial intelligence uh, to be able to really optimize the plant operations based on that additional information. So this particular uh, provision is, is really focused on um, you know, working with states to make resources available for uh, smart manufacturers to uh, small and medium manufacturers to in implement smart manufacturing technologies and then have the ability to go through and actually process all the information. So as you can imagine, you know, manufacturing processes can be pretty complex. And so if you're having sensors and, and controls that are, are taking me measurements, that optimization process can be pretty complex. And sometimes that uh, you know, can push you into the uh, space of needing a high performance computer to be able to even process all of those data points and put it together in an optimization model. So this provision is actually being led out of the Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains. And so we're really gonna be working with them. Uh, you know, There's a, a high performance computing for manufacturing program that AMO uh, you know, leads. And so we're going to really be trying to bring a lot of the lessons learned from that program into how this provision gets implemented. And so uh, it'll be, you know, something that, you know, we'll be wanting to bring uh, that experience to the states so that the states can make it uh, as, as valuable as possible for their manufacturers. And so they can be using those, you know, information technology resources to help make them more productive you know, more cost effective through using less energy. Got it. And I think one last question on my end here. Um, I think focusing on section 40209, the Advanced Manu Energy Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Program. So obviously this program focuses primarily on, on coal related communities, but are there other manufacturing related programs that focused on different energy transition communities including like oil and gas? Yes, there are. So there are, are a number of provisions that are, are focused on um, transitional communities. And one of the, the things uh, you know, to let you know about is that currently there is an interagency working group uh, on um, uh, energy transitional communities. So it, it's you know, really looking at these kind of communities and economic revitalization. So this group has uh, 12 different agencies involved in it. So DOE is just one. Um, and they've developed a clearinghouse of all the federal programs. So not just the Department of Energy programs, but all of the other agencies that have programs. I know there's a lot from the um, Economic Development uh, Administration that is part of Department of Commerce. And so, you know, that clearinghouse of federal programs uh, that has funding to invest in energy communities is a really great place for, for states to be able to go and, and see what's available and how they can be working with the communities in their states, uh, you know, to access that funding and, and to be able to, um, you, know, you know, potentially help the, the communities, you know, secure funding through those, uh, those resources. So it has a really useful search function. And so you can look at, you know, different types of, of eligibility and so it's a great thing to, to check out. And um, that's something here we can try to make sure that that uh, gets posted in the chat so that folks have the, the URL to that uh, working group and, and the clearinghouse. house. 
All right, so we have about five minutes left here. Um, Want to just reiterate a final call for any questions for Anne here while we have her on the phone and all of her great expertise as well. Um, so please put those in the chat or Q&A. Otherwise, we can transition to some wrap up here. And I would like to turn things back over to my colleague, Rodney, um, who will be able to talk to us a little bit more about next steps and provide some closing thoughts as we wrap up this webinar. Rodney, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you, Sam. And thank you so much, Anne. And it's uh, great to hear the, the, the last uh, answer about the interagency group uh, looking at energy transition uh, communities. I think that'll be a very valuable resource. So we will be sure to uh, highlight that as we develop our uh, working group. And uh, so speaking of next steps, uh, the working group is one of those. Uh, we will um, be developing an industrial manufacturing state working group. Uh, the states have already received through uh, one of our NASIO bulletins that goes to the state energy offices, a questionnaire. Uh, many thanks to a fair number of states that have responded to the questionnaire, which is brief, you know, five, 10 minutes on state interests, priorities, and objectives and awareness of these technical and business assistance uh, offerings by DOE as well as other agencies. Uh, it is not too late uh, to uh, respond to those. So if you are with the State Energy Office, uh, please uh, send us an email and we will be glad to link you to the questionnaire. Uh, we will use those questionnaires to uh, understand more about and, and pass along to our AMO friends, uh, your interests and priorities. And um, we will then be diving a bit deeper to do interviews with uh, states that raise their hands to join the working group, to identify and map uh, relevant programs and resources, to help uh, you, the states, uh, provide input uh, to DOE on industrial manufacturing needs. The working group will seek to promote exchange, engagement, and outreach. And uh, as mentioned, our, our focus, uh, we have two prongs in the focus, uh, two foci, I should say, one being technical assistance and business assistance for existing industries, but also to highlight new technologies, techniques, and approaches. So we will be engaging uh, outside uh, speakers from industry and technology providers to try to raise awareness of these opportunities among the states. And we hope uh, as resources are available, maybe to do uh, field trips or at least virtual tours of some interesting industrial locations. And we will also be developing a resource page uh, to memorialize some of these things and, and to update with new resources and the RFIs and NOIs and FOAs and the other letters of the alphabet that DOE and other agencies um, issue as opportunities. So uh, I think with that, we are near the top of the hour. Uh, last chance for questions. Do you see any more questions, Sam? No more questions over here, Rod. Okay. Uh, we did put in the chat uh, links to uh, various resources, including a couple of the RFIs. Um, and we also put in, as you see uh, on this uh, last slide, uh, Sam and my contact information. We welcome inquiries, uh, suggestions, and uh, look forward to working with you in the States as well as our other stakeholders and our friends at EPA and other agencies as well as DOE to uh, work to improve uh, the energy efficiency and cleanliness, if you will, and, and the competitiveness of American manufacturing. So uh, thank you all. Uh, again, many thanks to Anne and her colleagues at DOE. We're greatly looking forward to our uh, collaboration and cooperation in this work and have a great uh, rest of the day and great rest of the week as well. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.